Hello, my name is Saurabh Galagli. I'm an orthopedic surgeon in private practice at Monterey Spine and Joint in beautiful Monterey, California. I'm going to take a couple of minutes to describe, in general, an outpatient surgical procedure called a microscopic discectomy. A microscopic discectomy is a minimally invasive, microscopically assisted surgical procedure that is performed to alleviate severe back and leg pain that is not responded to other forms of treatment, such as physical therapy, anti-inflammatory medications, muscle relaxants, and possibly even spinal injections. Because most people who have pain due to a herniated disc will thankfully get better without an operation, this surgical procedure is really only reserved for people who have had pain for at least six weeks and who usually have such severe compression of the nerve roots that they have numbness and possibly even muscle weakness in their legs. The most common reason that we perform a microscopic discectomy is because the patient has a herniated disc in the lumbar spine. This is an example of the MRI scan of a patient who has a large herniated disc in the lumbar spine at the L4-5 level. In this image, we can clearly see how the herniated disc is bulging into the spinal canal and squeezing the nerve roots that travel down to the legs. If the patient who has this herniation has had severe pain for at least six weeks, if they have numbness or weakness in their legs, and if their pain has not responded to conservative care, then they are a candidate for a procedure that will surgically remove the bulging portion of the disc. We perform these operations at an outpatient surgical center in Monterey, California called Monterey Peninsula Surgery Center. MPSC is located in the Ryan Ranch area of Monterey, and the center is a fully accredited outpatient surgical center that is a fantastic place to work. We choose to work at MPSC because we know that our patients will receive excellent care there. The center takes most major forms of insurance, and our staff will make sure that your operation is pre-approved by your insurance company prior to surgery. In general, outpatient surgical centers are a very cost-effective place to have surgery performed. On the day of the operation, the patient is seen by the anesthesiologist in the pre-op holding area. An IV is started, and I write the word yes on the patient's back to indicate that this is the general area where the operation is going to be performed. The patient is then rolled back to the operating room. The anesthesiologist gives the patient a combination of medications to send them off to sleep in a smooth and gentle fashion, and a breathing tube is inserted for what we call a general anesthetic. Once the patient is asleep, we position the patient face down on a special table called a Wilson frame. A general anesthetic, which is when the patient goes completely to sleep, is required for this operation because it would be nearly impossible for the patient to stay still in this position for the hour and a half that is usually required to perform the procedure. We use an intraoperative x-ray machine to take a picture of the spine to make sure that we are operating on the correct level. We also have the MRI scan in the room during the operation so that we can correlate what we see on the patient's MRI scan with what we see during the procedure. We mark the level of the incision on the skin with a marker, and then we use a special type of soap to sterilize the skin prior to surgery. This soap can leave a slight film on the skin after the operation, which may take a few days or a week to wear off. The patient is prepared for surgery in a series of steps that we call prepped and draped in the standard surgical fashion, and this is what allows us to create a sterile field in which to operate. Prior to making an incision, local anesthetic is injected around the site of the incision to decrease post-operative pain, and a minimally inv invasive incision is made. The area where the disc herniation is occurring is surgically exposed, and the microscope is brought into the surgical field. A tiny keyhole opening is made into the spinal canal. The herniated portion of the disc is then removed with special surgical instruments. How much of the disc is removed depends upon the size of the herniation and the amount of disc degeneration that has already occurred. If the patient is very young and the disc is otherwise quite healthy, we try to take out just the herniated portion of the disc, leaving as much of the normal disc behind. This procedure is called a fragmentectomy. If the disc herniation is occurring in the setting of a significant amount of degeneration, and sometimes we need to take out more of the disc material, a procedure that we call a subtotal discectomy. We will go over your MRI scan with you in detail in advance of surgery, and we will have the opportunity to discuss the specifics of your MRI findings and your disc herniation. After the herniated portion of the disc is removed, the hard part of the operation is over, and we carefully sew up the incision. All of our sutures are underneath the skin in this procedure. The skin is sewn up with an absorbable suture so that no sutures or staples need to be removed in clinic after the operation. A special type of super glue is applied over the incision to make it watertight, and special tapes called steri strips are used to reinforce the closure. A sterile plastic bandage that is basically an expensive band-aid is then applied to the incision. After the operation, the patient is wheeled in a bed back to the post-operative holding area. The nurses will get the patient out of bed once they are awake, and in most instances, the patient goes home on the same day. Because we have a lot of patients who travel to the Monterey Peninsula from the Central Valley and other parts of California for outpatient spine surgery, we have the ability to keep people overnight in the surgery center if we need to. The surgery center will call in a prescription for post-operative pain and muscle spasm to the pharmacy of your choosing. 
For the first six weeks after surgery, you can do anything you like as long as your movements are slow, controlled, and pain-free. The plastic-coated bandage should stay on until you return to see me in clinic one week after the operation. You can shower without removing the bandage and then pat this area gently dry. Most patients choose to go back to work within two to four weeks, and we find that gentle exercise in the form of a 20-minute walk twice per day after surgery is the fastest way to recover. You can drive once you are comfortable, not taking narcotic pain medications, and feel up to it. In general, most people are able to drive within a few days to a week after surgery. In some instances, we will send you to PT to work on posture and abdominal muscle strengthening after the operation, but we will discuss these specifics face to face. We look forward to having the opportunity to take care of you at Monterey Spine and Join, where we believe that a team approach to spinal disorders achieves great results.